Okay, good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. I heard of this technique that was used from BGS the other night. This was Friday night. Um, and what they did is injected nanoparticles into the eyes of mice, and this gives them infrared vision. I'll leave a link to all the articles in the description box. This is um, an image of a mouse who has infrared vision. So there are a lot of different ideas that come to mind. You are, of course, making the prey be able to see as the predator because uh, snakes are able to see with infrared, most reptiles. Um, are able to see with infrared vision, heat seeking vision. So this is really going against evolution and the natural order of the way mice view the world. But it's also about harnessing and manipulating visible light and making that something um, that is easily, um, sorry about that, <clears throat> making it something that's easily translated into animals. So we understand that you have high energy gamma radiation, ultraviolet radiation, and you can go from that side of the spectrum down to the low infrared and radio waves. And this group of researchers decided to capture the near infrared wavelengths of light without a lot of bulky equipment. They just developed a nanoparticle injection where they engineered two photons of infrared light into a single photon that mammalian eyes could pick up. So the result is the incoming infrared photons with wavelengths of 980 nanometers that gets translated into photons with wavelengths of 535 nanometers. <clears throat> that sits right around the green part of the visible spectrum. So it turns infrared light that we cannot see into visible light. And the nanoparticles are coated with a protein that helps them to bind to photoreceptors and inject it beneath the retinas of the mice where they grabbed onto the rods and cones that turn photons into neural messages. So if we go to the actual article where the study was done, uh, they talk about mammalian near infrared image vision through injectable and self-powered retinal nano antennae. And they give a graphical abstract of how they did their work. And you can see that here. It's basically explaining what I just said, but in a picture. So they've obtained the action spectrum and the red line denotes where they want to extend the vision of the mice. They injected intraorbital injection right at the, the back of the eye near the retina so it's a subretinal injection, and that gives the mice the ability to see infrared. So now they are able to see just as their predators would be able to see. And I mentioned on that Hangout that um, I think in the comment section that this is there's some military objective to this. Obviously, um, if you're able to see infrared, then the use of bulky equipment is not needed. You know, you are the weapon yourself. You know, you are the equipment yourself. So the integration of human intelligence and human ability, human physiology with technology is becoming more and more prevalent. The highlights of this study are they designed an ocular injectable photoreceptor binding up conversion nanoparticles. So not only are they using nanoparticles, but they're using those that are adjusted for this particular application. 
the nanoparticles they say here are safe and enable NIR light sens sensation and pattern vision. This NIR pattern vision is compatible with native daylight vision. And this method offers options for mammalian re vision repair and enhancement. So people with um, macular degeneration, retinal detachment, um, could there could be some application there. Uh, mutations of the eye, retinal neuropathy. Um, there could be an application for them as well. And let's see. So near infrared retinal nano antennae is something that is going to, I think, be coming down the line soon. I'm going to zoom down or scroll down a little bit to some of their data they have in this paper. And you can go through this as well. They show how they did the injection again here. <clears throat> they're trying to show you also how the rods and cones are affected, how they're changed after the injections. So we keep coming down some. Here's more data where they do uh, immunohistochemistry, immuno, excuse me, immunocytochemistry, immunofluorescence, and C and D, and show how the layers of the cells are changed without injection and with injection. So they become more active and they're able to absorb the nanoparticles successfully. After, let's see, five to six weeks, they have injection and they're able to change the saturation of the photocurrents. If you can change saturation of photocurrent, meaning you're changing how the rods and cones in the eye function, then that's the perfect explanation for the technology they developed, giving mice the ability to see with infrared vision. And here's another article from MIT Technology Review. A shot of nanoparticles lets mice see in the dark. They talk about how it works. They talk about the tests they did. They say it was long lasting, but the most important thing is, would it work in humans? This team from China says that it will, they think it, they believe it will work because they think it could potentially fix red color blindness, for example. Red color blindness, uh, I'm not sure which group that's from. You guys can let me know. But they filed a patent for their work and they think it could lead to both civilian and military applications. Didn't I just mention that earlier? Hmm. Whether someone would volunteer for a sight altering eye injection rather than just opting for night vision goggles remains to be seen. So when I first heard of this technique, the first thing I thought of was a show called Black Mirror on Netflix. The specific episode was called Men Against Fire. And because of Net Netflix's um, uh, processing on their platform, I'm not able to play clips. But if you go to Netflix or you go to, um, I guess you can go to videos and see what they have there. A lot of it is reviews of the show, of the episode itself. Spoilers are there as well. There are some trailers of the show. But one thing I noticed is they manipulated the eyes in this episode. And what they were able to do with the eyes with this technology called mass <clears throat> is the military officers were able to um, project their plans in front of them and only they could see what was in front of them. Nobody else without the mass injection could see. There's another episode as well on Black Mirror um, this episode, uh, I think it was about like how you can record what you see and rewind it. Um, but the main connection I had was that this technology altered vision and it altered other senses such as the sense of smell. So when this officer had his mass technology 
abruptly um, damaged, he was able to smell again. He couldn't smell before that. His sense of smell, his sense of hearing, his sense of vision were, were off. And this is an example of what they would see. So this is a screenshot of the episode where the officer is in the truck. They're rolling to a potential place where they're going to take out a group of people called roaches. And roaches are a euphemism for any um, any group of people that they don't want around, basically. And he was sitting in front of this lady, this other officer in the truck, and he was able to project these images all in front of him. And there's another image here where he's touching. He's trying to touch the image with his gloved hand and he, he can't touch it. It's, it's a projection. So in the episode, they don't show infrared vision being used, but it would not be far fetched to think that this is something that could be translated into the military. So I'll leave you all with the links and everything. Um, there's also an article here. There's also an article here that discusses Black Mirror, this Black Mirror um, episode, Men Against Fire. And in this episode, they just say technology makes dehumanization easier because it can act as an intermediary controlling what we see, how we see it, and also us. So that goes back to a lot of the um, ideas of it's not about you and me, it's about us. This is an example of the technology's effect on vision where on the left side, this is what they see, a roach, a individual that needs to be destroyed because they're a potential threat on society. On the right side, that's exactly what the woman really looks like. Without the mass technology, she's a regular person. So they say that technology is used as a control mechanism. It controls the hosts because these military officers are hosts of the mass technology. It's actually like a virus. CRISPR comes to mind for me, but yeah, that's all I have on this topic. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it wasn't too intense. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Thank you everyone who has already subscribed. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and I'll holler at you in the next video. Have a great day.